structure of attitudes and how it applies to our goals. This is the Think Your Reality Podcast, episode 26. Hang on, here we go. Your destiny is by your design. Getting what you want in your professional life is gained by following a series of steps created by your mindset. Are you ready to start the journey? This is the Think Your Reality Podcast. Here's Mike Sims. Hey, it's Michael, and this is the Think Your Reality Podcast. As always, I have to be grateful for you. And thank you very much for allowing me to spend some time with you and hopefully be some sort of a benefit to you on your way to reaching your goals in life. Anyway, attitude structure can be described in terms of three components. The first one, effective component. This involves a person's feelings or emotions about the attitude change. For example, I'm uncomfortable with change. How you feel about success and the attainment of it. What steps will you need to take? What's the comfort level of these steps? Think about it. It's interesting that people want to lose weight. And until it costs them a change in their attitude and actions surrounding food and exercise. I've been guilty of this myself many times. Initially, they'll say, oh, I'm all for it. Yeah, I've got to get healthy. Pause. And then, yeah, so long as I don't have to do too much. It doesn't work like that. It's on par with, well, I want success. I just don't want to be inconvenienced or have to change anything. Again, not going to happen. I'll share a story with you. I had seen my general practitioner when I was in my late 40s. I had put on weight, as most guys do, and needed to do something about it. Now, back in the day when I was a younger man, I was a long-distance runner. And so I asked his opinion on running shoes, knee braces, and a good orthopedist. And with every question, my general practitioner just kept shaking his head no. He told me in no uncertain terms, Michael, if you run in your 40s, you will not walk in your 60s. That was sobering. I had then to change the habit of running to stay in shape. I had to change the way that I felt about running. I had to abandon something that I genuinely enjoyed because the long-term effect was going to be detrimental to me. His solution to the problem was either bike or swim. Now, I got to be honest with you. I swim like a rock. Needless to say, I went and got a bike. I took what he said to heart. I'm 60 years old now at this recording, and I weigh the same as I did when I was a senior in high school. And I'm grateful for it. But until I took that attitude of change, it wasn't going to happen. I'll tell you right now, I will not go back to being 55 pounds heavier, which is what I was. But the toughest part was getting started with the new attitude. Until my mindset saw what the future looked like, and it was not good. I was really on my way to being morbidly obese with my current version of quote-unquote normal. You have to be more uncomfortable with your current than your future. You have to get comfortable with the difference in your attitude and habits. It's where your change comes from. We know that, right? You think your reality. Your change comes from within. We've touched on this many, many times. An affirmation can be something as simple as, this doesn't serve my needs. This is beneath me, and I will no longer employ it. Once you articulate those things, again, we've touched on this as well, your subconscious mind hears it, accepts it as gospel truth, and brings about the steps necessary to make it very tangible in your life. The second aspect being behavioral component The way the attitude we have influences on how we act or behave. Another example, I am so accustomed to my habits. It's just who I am. I've always done it this way. Or I don't know what first to do. Let's think about this. Keeping your current habits that have not yielded you what you want is on par with keeping a financial advisor that's stealing from you. If you are accustomed to those old habits, are you also accustomed to living a life less than you deserve? I'd say no. So then what would it take to rid yourself of those ways of thinking or doing things that do not serve your purpose? Something as simple or out of the ordinary like reciting affirmations can, in fact, change your attitude. It's not difficult to leave the trash at the curb. You should no longer want to keep it as you would those habits. Changing your behavior changes what life brings to you. Life mirrors back to you what you put out into it. That's why so many people do not reach their potential because they're set in these habits that have never brought them anything, but they're accustomed to them. Their behaviors toward their professional lives and goals mirror 
that which they put into it. Change your behaviors. Change your level of acceptance and expectations. Have you ever been in a relationship that wasn't healthy? I think we all have. The other party expected things from you. Did you notice their change in demeanor or expectation from you when you were there no longer to meet their demands? I've seen it with my mom and my mother-in-law and my wife's relationship. I will no longer placate you. Their demeanor changed. Actually, it was your change that forced or facilitated theirs. Apply the same steps you are taking toward your goals. Different behaviors, different outcome. Another example, last one. A child having a tantrum in the store. When the parent walked away but kept a safe distance, the child changed their habit. And then there's the last, the cognitive component. This involves a person's belief or knowledge about an attitude object. For example, I'm not certain it will work. And we've all said that. It won't work if you don't. Doing something badly is better than doing nothing flawlessly. I can argue at great lengths for your success. I don't know you, and yet I do believe you have something of a God-given talent that when put to use will make the changes you need, deserve and afford you a better version of you and your future. And that's the whole premise of this podcast. I've often had people ask me that question. Well, Michael, what if it doesn't work? Now, employing the 180-degree theory, my response is always, what if it does? If you're going to adopt a structure of attitude, why not one that serves you? Why not one that supports your beliefs and brings to you those things that people only dream about? What if the changes you're apprehensive about making are the very things you need to embrace to have the life you've always wanted? I ask this question already knowing the answer. They are. I read that the cave we fear to enter contains within it the very things we want. Or fear, an acronym, for false expectations appearing real. Self-limiting attitudes need to be abandoned. What if your attitude became one of, it will work and I will continue until I prove myself correct. When you believe in your path and destiny... This attitude is easy to embrace. I promise you it is. And it brings to you a better version and more successful definition of you. My name is Mike Sims. This is the Think Your Reality Podcast. If you've heard me before, you know how I close. I wish you nothing but an awesome day, as I really do believe beyond the shadow of a doubt, you deserve nothing less. Thank you so, so much.